This is what we're getting from the FBI right now. They talk about a phone call that came in at 2.02 a.m. local time last Sunday morning in Orlando. Uh, the transcript that has been released goes like so. Emergency 911, this is being recorded. In the name of God, the merciful, the beneficial, and something is said in Arabic. Uh, he continues, praise be to God and prayers as well as peace be upon the prophet of God. I let you know I'm in Orlando and I did the shootings. The 911 operator, what's your name? My name is I pledge of allegiance to omitted. Okay, what's your name? I pledge allegiance to omitted. May God protect him in Arabic and on behalf of omitted. The 911 operator, all right, where are you? The killer in Orlando. Where in Orlando was the next question from the 911 operator. End of call. Remember, there were three 911 calls that night. He made the first one and hung up. He made the second one, and this was the exchange. There was a third reverse 911 call in which the operator calls back the number that came in. So there were three there. Then later they go into the crisis negotiation team, which started, according to this transcript, at 2.48 a.m., and there were three phone calls, one nine minutes in length, one 16 minutes in length, and one three minutes in length after that. Catherine Herridge is going through all this information, as we are as well. And Catherine, we want to get to you now live in D.C. You knew this was coming, and your initial reaction based on what we have seen so far. Well, it's a pretty limited uh, transcript bill. It's only about uh, three pages in length. Uh, but three things immediately jump out to me. Uh, his Pledge of Allegiance uh, to the Islamic State uh, is like a consistent drumbeat uh, throughout these phone calls. It's not kind of a one-off or an isolated uh, event. He also describes himself uh, as a soldier of uh, the caliphate. We know witnesses inside the club described how Omar Mateen said, stop bombing my country. Uh, that was not a reference to Afghanistan. That was a reference to the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. He also threatens in the phone calls that there is a car outside that is laden with explosives and that he also has a suicide vest. Uh, that further explains uh, the reluctance, if you will, of the Florida SWAT teams to go in immediately after the uh, suicide attacks in France in November last year. The view was that they could no longer negotiate with these people because they were willing to die, so they would go in immediately, but we did not see this in Florida. Now we have from the transcript a better understanding as to why there was the delay. Uh, and then finally, what I would note, which is really a lingering security question here, is why his phone, his, his phone was not blocked. Because with an active phone like that, he would have the ability to do a remote detonation uh, of any devices that were outside that club uh, and to really decimate mm. the first responders. But the, the, the bottom line in this transcript is that his pledge of allegiance to the Islamic State is really like a steady drumbeat that is woven uh, throughout these phone calls. He pledges allegiance. He also pledges solidarity to other terrorists. Uh, and then he also sort of takes on the mantle of ISIS, saying that he is an Islamic soldier, uh, uh, presumably uh, of the caliphate. So it's a, so it's a he, pretty steady yeah. beat. Uh, uh, also, he, he tells the negotiator, the crisis no negotiator, um, which was not part of the original 911 call, but it came about 40 minutes later, tell America to stop bombing Syria and Iraq and that is why he is, quote, out here right now. Uh, when the negotiator said, asked him what he had done, he said, you already know what I have done. And then he referred to this vehicle outside that Correct. has some bombs mm -hmm. just to let you know, quoting him now, uh, you people are going to get it. I'm going to ignite it if they try to do anything stupid, end quote, and also referred to the bombs that were used in France. His words used in France, quote, in the next few days, you're going to see more of this type of action going on, end quote. Mm -hmm. And then, Catherine, he hung up. Mm -hmm. That's why there were three phone calls. Uh, I have to say I find uh, the format of this transcript somewhat uh, confusing in the sense that we see the sections that are redacted and then just based on my read, there are uh, paragraphs summarizing these communications uh, with the hostage negotiators. So the question I have is why some portions are word for word verbatim and then their redactions and then others are sort of in, in some, uh, if you will. So it doesn't seem to be treated consistently throughout that transcript. We may understand more at that FBI 
FBI briefing as to why uh, mm -hmm. it was done this way, Bill. Uh, two more things. As victims are being <coughs> yep. rescued, mm -hmm. he, he said he will put four vests with bombs on victims within See, 15 minutes. And then mm -hmm. at 514 a.m., right. a little more than three hours after it started, it was over with shots being fired inside. Catherine, thank you. Much more to You're come welcome, on this Bill. in Washington.